So if you have your Bibles, open your Bibles to Psalm 46. Psalm 46. <clears throat> Psalm 46 and 1. We'll do 1, verse 1, and 2a. Alright? The A part of a verse is usually the first part of the verse. If after the comma, that will be the B part. Okay? So, Psalm 46 and 1 says, God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in times of trouble. Therefore, what? Therefore, let's say it again. We, let's say it one more time. Therefore, I want to talk about this morning. God is in times like this. God is. Amen. God is in times like this. God is. God was. God will be. There, there's never been a time where God wasn't. Amen. God has never been not him. Why? Because he's God. And even when things look a certain kind of way in our lives, we have to remind ourselves that God is. Now, whatever you put after that, amen, will dictate your relationship with him. If you say God is weak, then that's, that's what God is going to mean to you. While the disease should be a reminder that life on earth is brief um, and can be lost at any moment. Uh, as bad as a pandemic is, as I said earlier, hell is worse. And the Christian should have the assurance today, amen, that you are going to heaven. The one thing about this whole situation in the last week or two or however long, it reminds us, amen, that there is a God. Amen. And that God is powerful. But it's when we're in trouble that sometimes we become short-sighted. Sometimes we lose vision. Sometimes... We lose focus when things are falling apart in our lives. I find it very interesting that this pandemic is just a foretaste of what will happen in the end times. I find it very interesting that God keeps giving us clues. As I said this morning, it's not the end times. We can't say that. But all of the signs are pointing that in that direction. And if you have not really looked at it, or if you have not really looked at your life lately, then I pray that this would not cause you to panic, but it would cause you to take another look at your relationship with Jesus Christ. Now the reason why I say God is. Is because if you're going to rely on God. You have to know who he is. Amen. Some theologians say that God is pure actuality. With no potentiality. In other words God does not need to know. Or he doesn't learn anything. He knows everything. God has foreknowledge of your next thought. God knows what we will do under pressure. James says, count it all joy. When you encounter various trials. That word various means multicolor. 
when you're surrounded by multicolored trials, he says, consider it all joy. But you can't go too far after that verse because if you read verse 1, he says, James, a bondservant of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. He says, a bondservant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 tribes who are dispersed abroad. Greetings. I've always been baffled by that. That they were, they had a pandemic going on at that time. They had persecution. They were being persecuted. They were being talked about. They were being lied on. They were being killed. They were scattered all over the world. And James says to them, consider it all joy. I find that to be very interesting because I, last time I went through whatever I went through, the last thing that I was thinking about was joy. And our world right now is in a panic. The world has no joy. The world has peace, but that peace doesn't last. But, but the Bible tells us in this particular psalm, this psalm was a song that was sung in the temple. Amen. The sons of Korah. Amen. Would sing this song in the temple because in that time you'll find that trouble was always around. Believe it or not, we're at risk every day. When you get in your car, your man-made vehicles. Come on, somebody. And you get on this highway. There's no guarantee. Come on and help me, somebody. But we're worried about <laughs> the coronavirus. And God, tell your neighbor, God is. God is. Amen. So, so as we go here, I just got a few things I want to share with you, and we're going to go home. Amen. Remember this. Fear cannot, fear cannot get me if I have faith. Amen. And what the writer is trying to help us to understand and realize is that we have to ask ourselves a question. Amen. Do we really know who God is? He writes, he begins, he says, God is, you see what he says right there? He says, first thing he says, God is our refuge. Amen. God is our what? Refuge. Now, I believe that we all need rescuing. God has rescued us from the slave market of sin. God has rescued us from ourselves. God has rescued us from our depravity. But, but I find it in the context of trouble. In the context of panic. In the context of Facebook reporters. You know, there are professional Facebook reporters. They're reporting fake news. I wish I had somebody. And we're falling for it, y'all. But the one thing you have to remember, that God is our refuge. So the first thing God is, God is, number one, He's our shelter. So if you need a place to quarantine, run to Him. God is so vast and so big that you could run right into Him. I wish I had somebody. You know why you can run into God? Because He's spirit. And when you run into Him, He will envelope you. He will provide a shelter of protection in the midst of your trouble. So I don't know what you're going through right now. But you got to remember that God is our shelter. He provides protection. He provides security. This word is used figuratively most often of God as a refuge for his people. And so saints, today we have to remind ourselves that he is our shelter. Amen. And he is the one that will protect us in times like this. He says God is our refuge. He's a, he's a, he's a, he's a shelter, y'all. Amen. He provides covering. He provides, he provides the nourishment that we need. He protects us from anything that will harm us. But you got to run to him, not from him. And oftentimes we're running from him 
and we're not running to him because we think we're not good enough for him. But I want to help somebody. Let me help you real quick. You are God's children. Come on, somebody. And, and if you don't see him as your shelter, amen, then you'll be running to someone else for safety. Are you with me? Look what he says. He says, God is our shelter. The next thing he says, God is our refuge and strength. And strength. Now, this verb, strength. He says what? Our strength. So, this, this, word, this word for strength means he's a fortress. God, in other words, in those times, a fortress was like a castle. You know what a castle is symbolic of? A stronghold. I wish I had somebody. See, there's no, listen, God is stronger than anything that you can even imagine because he's God. So not only is God is our shelter, but the next thing is when you don't have any, when you're ready to throw in the towel, when you're ready to quit, how many have been ready to quit? How many have been ready to throw in the towel? Look, can I tell you something? Draw on that strength. Amen. Say, God, give me the strength because you are my strength. And my strength comes from the Lord. Saints, you know how easy it is to give up? You know how easy it is to panic? You know how easy it is to fall in a place where you're so weak? Where you can't pay attention. Where you're ready to give up and throw in the towel. But God says, I am your strength. And I will give you the strength. Listen, I've seen God give people strength in their body that they should not have had. But they didn't give up. We, we let a cold cause us... <laughs> <laughs> Come on, somebody. To forget who he is. A few body aches and pain. But God said, don't you let this. I'm your strength. I am your strength. Come on, somebody. The next thing he says, God is our refuge and strength. Look, look what he says. This is the part that really, that blesses me right here. A very, not even help. Don't even go to help yet. Just say very present. All the other gods are not present. When roll call is given, God shows up. As a matter of fact, he's the one that gives roll call in the morning. You know what he does? He said, wake up. When you're sleeping in the very image of death, he's never been late. He's always on time. He's present. This verb employs both the active and passive sense. Passive means to be found. Active means he's working. Watch this. But in addition to the passive sense and the active sense, or the active sense and the passive sense, watch this, it's also in the causative sense. Lord have mercy. So in other words... <laughs> God, amen, operates in all tenses, so he's always present. <laughs> Whether you're going, coming, or leaving, or falling back, he's present. Thank God that he's present. I wish I had a few people say amen with me. Listen, God is present right now. He was present before Corona. And he's present now. He's present in cancer. He's present in diabetes. He's present with heart failure. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. He's present. And that's what we fail. Listen, every now and then you ought to sense his presence. And here's how you know when you're in his presence. You've got peace. I'm not ignoring the, the, the cautions and stuff, but listen, I'm, when, when Katrina came, I had peace. Come on now. Amen. When everybody, my wife, and 
They jumped in the truck and they heading to Dallas. I said, I ain't going nowhere. I got peace. And here's what I did. I started to pray. I said, Lord, have your way. And I know it wasn't just me praying. And then all of a sudden I watched Katrina do, I watched that thing do this. This is Houston. I watched it took a dip and go around. I said, Lord, you present. I will never forget. I said, where y'all at? Oh, we stuck in traffic. We ain't even made it. We ain't even made it to Dallas yet. Next in line. God is present. See, oftentimes we forget how powerful he is. And him being in all tenses means that he goes nowhere. So whether you're dealing with him in the past, he's there. In the present, he's there. And in the future, he's there. Thank God for his presentness. Watch this. He's not an absent parent. <laughs> he does not neglect his children. God is present there. You know, sometimes we can't make it to our kids' recitals. We can't make it to certain things they're doing. But God says, I will always show up. He has never left you. He says, I'll never leave you. Nor will I ever forsake you. So why are you panicking? Amen. Why are you in the line? Come on now. Why are you in the line wrapped around the corner? How much toilet paper can you use? I know what some of you are doing. You resell it on eBay. I, I know what you're doing. I know what you're really... So you're profiting from the problem. Oh, come on, man. How do you get an economy to boost up? Hurricanes. Come on, now, how many times you boarded up your house and ain't no rain came? <laughs> He's present. Listen to me. God is spirit. He operates in eternity. And that's how he can be present with you on the north side, with you on the southwest side, with you on the east side, with you in Japan, with you in Africa. That's how he can do this stuff. And if he says he's a very, a ve listen to the word, very present. But how is it that you're not experiencing his presence? So I'm still preaching my message, experiencing God's presence. How, how is it that you and I sometimes don't even know he's there? You need to be scared to know, oh, God is there. I don't see the ghost. <laughs> God don't need to scare you to let you know he's there. And here's the thing. Wherever you go, you'll run right into him. You're like, dang, I can't get away. We're at the, play, we're at the hotel, talking to the lady. I never told her who I was. And so we're conversating. She said, you must be a minister. So I said, what, what gave me away? I had a shirt on that say boxing. You know what I mean? I said, this is what I do. She said, no, you don't. Just come on. This, now you're lying. <laughs> She said, because the way you talk Amen. about God. I'm like, huh? She said, the way you talk about God, only a minister would talk about God like that. Amen. I'm like, dang, I gave myself away. Right. Peter trying to run away from God. <laughs> Come on, y'all. What did Peter do? Peter went and started hanging with the folk, right? Yeah. Warming and said, little girl said, I know you. So you don't know me. <laughs> nah, not me. He had to cuss. And, he, and she said, even in your cussing, you sound holy. Yeah. Ain't that so? How you sound holy when you cussing? So, so when, he's, when we say God is present, I want you to not panic and just say, okay, God, you, you're present. But I find it very interesting. Look, look at this. It, it, The writer was referring to Deuteronomy 4-7 where it says, 
For what great nation is there that has a God so near to it as the Lord our God, watch this, whenever we call him. What nation has a God like our God? That whenever you call, whenever you say daddy, he said, what you need? Our father, which are in, come on now, hallowed be thy. You can't just come to him asking him for stuff. You have to reverence him. I believe that's probably why we don't know he's present because we're not reverencing him. That's what he says. He says, God is our He's very present. A very present what? What was the first point? Our what? Come on, y'all. What else do you need? You don't need a refrigerator full of food. When he's sufficient? Panickers. Watch this. He said very present what? And look, a very present help. I just had to label that word. That word help means assistance or support. Amen. You don't need food stamps. When you got help. (laughs) When you got God as your help. I'm sorry. God as your very present help. Watch this. So not only is he our shelter. He's our strength. He's our sufficiency. What well, watch this? You ready? He's our what? Support. He ain't never been late on child support. Never. 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 They don't even hurt him to take care of you. He knows your number. And guess what? He blesses you like, like, watch this, like you belong to him. Come on, somebody. He blesses you like you belong to him. You have what you have because of him. So what am I tripping about? He's my support. Thank you, Lord, for being my help. My help. My support, my strength, my shelter. Who do I run to? Look what he says next. He says he's my he's he's our very present help. When? When? When affliction comes. When anguish comes. When when the world is falling apart. When 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 the media is causing us to panic and 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 ah. Oh, he says I'm there. But your faith. But watch this. Here's what you got to remind yourself of. Mm-hmm. Last week, week before, we had a man-made accident at the 610 and Clinton Bridge. They had st- they said they had water so high, and and and, and there were some people sitting on the truck. And what they were waiting for was some help. Because at that very moment, they were in trouble. Are you with me? So not only is God our support, but the next thing is, he's our savior. Some of us, we need rescuing. God needs to rescue you from that bad thinking. He needs to rescue you from the life that you're living. Because right now you're sinking, boo. And here's the thing. You've allowed the mess to cause you to make a mistake about your Savior. Listen, He's the Savior of the world. Amen. He is the Ewan Gillian. Come on, somebody. He is Jesus Christ. And let me say this to you. We needed to be saved not only from our sins, but from ourselves. Because we self-destruct 
very easily. And when you hear about the pandemic, and when you're hearing this, and you're hearing that, and then all of a sudden, self starts getting in the picture. Tell your neighbor, we need a Savior. And can I tell you something? He's the only one that can save you. As a matter of fact, he'll give you holy confidence. He'll give you happiness. Watch this. And your happiness is not dependent on your happenings. I wish I had somebody. Amen. You'll have happiness because you know your Savior. Listen, this, what's happening right now? God is saying, look at me. Stop looking at the world or at it. But look at me. Pay attention to me. I'm trying to get you to understand something. I'm coming back. I want you to be ready. Not only, not only is he our savior. But look at verse 2. I just had to deal with just verse 2. Now, whenever you read scripture and you see the therefore, you always ask, what is it therefore? Right? Therefore introduces the context. So a lot of people, when they read scripture, they read it out of context. They isoge rather than exoge. Exoge means to draw out of the text What's there, not add what you think it be. Say like that. What you think it be. He says, therefore, therefore what? Because God is, come on, help me. Therefore, because God is what? My. We shall not fear. That's my word to these corona people. To the believers. Who are paranoid. We. He says who? You got to catch the words now. Will not. So lastly, God should be. So while you're scrolling, now I don't mind, you know, just do what you do. Just don't let it affect you. Because if you think the corona is tough, (laughs) wait till you see what's coming next. But we shall not fear. For God is our shelter. He's our strength. He's our sufficiency. He's our support. He's our savior. And he's our single focus. Though the earth should change. And though the mountain slip in the heart of the sea. Say, I'm not fearing. Fear cannot get me if faith. If faith. If, if I have faith and the facts. Amen. Fear, fear is afraid of faith. Mm-hmm. See, most of us have experienced, right, our children's dependence on us in the face of fear. Come on. Amen. When, when there's thunder and lightning, right? They come run, scream, they jump up, they come screaming, they come running down the hallway, jumping in your bed, right? They walk through the valley of their bedroom, down the valley. <laughs> Of the hall down the valley to your room, they jump in your bed because what they need is somebody to be with them. Your hug, you hugging them doesn't stop the rain, it doesn't stop the thunder, it doesn't stop the lightning, but it changes how they face it. They'll fall asleep in your arms. The fear that they had had is no longer there because mama and daddy is holding them. You help them to face their fear in the midst of their struggles. That's exactly what our Heavenly Father does for us in the face of our fears. He's holding us. He's cuddling us. He's comforting us. And He's telling us, child, 
Do not be afraid. Because I am with you. Give God a hand clap of praise.